Hi, my name is Ian with PA Industries, and today we're going to go over the various screens on a standard PA feeder. Before we begin, it should be made clear that this tutorial is intended for our current line of servo feeds, the PAK350 feeders. Micros and Minis, as well as any of our older feeders, such as the Ultra Series, have a different interface. Also, this tutorial will only cover the standard feeder. Screens and information pertaining to add-on components, such as PLS and STE, will be covered in a later video. If you are looking for information on a specific part of the menu, see the description to skip ahead to the part you need. With that taken care of, let's start at the main screen. The first line will give information on the current feature selection. It will tell if the feeder is standard or sequential, and display if the PLS and STE options are engaged. It will give the mode of operation as well, whether that be feed before press or press before feed, and single stroke or continuous stroke. The second line down simply gives the name of the program that is currently active. In a standard unit, the third line will be empty. That brings us to the fourth line, which tells the current mode of the feeder, such as auto, manual, and jog to length. Startup mode can also be displayed on this line, and if that is the case, the feeder has not completed booting up, making it impossible to jog material or switch into any other mode. After booting up and pressing the power button, the feeder should automatically enter manual mode. If the feeder is stuck in startup mode, check to ensure that there are no loose connections within the control box. Lastly, this line will also display if there is a servo drive fault. The last line will display a variety of messages ranging from synchronization faults to external alarms. Each message adequately explains what has occurred. But for more information, reference your operation manual or call service at PA Industries. For a detailed explanation of sync faults and how to troubleshoot them, check out our videos. The links will be in the description. The remaining information on the screen displays the feed length of the active program, as well as the current batch and sub-batch counts. To change the language on the feeder, simply touch the flag in the lower left corner. A list of flags will appear corresponding to the various languages the feeder interface supports. Select whatever language you require. The next button over that looks like a bookshelf gives access to all the programs that are stored on the control. To select a program, just touch it and it will highlight yellow. To edit the program, touch the pen and paper button. From here, a list of parameters including speed, length, and acceleration can be adjusted. To change any of these parameters, touch the current value and depending on the parameter, a numerical or alphanumerical keyboard will appear to enter your desired value. It should also be noted that anywhere this squiggle icon is displayed, it can be pressed to toggle a perimeter. Here you can see it toggles acceleration and deceleration. Press the save icon to save any changes you have made, and press the check mark button to activate the program that is currently selected. Back on the main menu, we find the next button, which looks like a padlock. If the padlock is locked, a password is being used on the feeder, and touching this button will prompt a password entry. In this case, the lock is open, so touching it just brings us to the switchboard menu. From here, we can see the following icons, which correspond to the following menus. The feeder setup, the fault history, clock settings, diagnostics, HMI configuration, units of measure, tuning parameters, and feeder option selection. The HMI configuration is preset before shipping out the feeder. Therefore, under normal circumstances, there is no reason for the customer to access this menu. And the feeder option selection menu only applies if you need to activate PLS, STE, or any other feeder options. In the feeder setup menu, you will be able to access feed direction, first stroke option, and other global parameters such as debounce and dwell time. In the fault history section, you will be able to see any faults that have occurred on the feeder along with the timestamp. This can be a very useful screen for debugging. The clock settings menu is simply a screen that allows you to change the time and date. 
It should be noted that you should not change the clock settings while the machine is in auto mode. Doing so could cause issues with motion control. The diagnostics menu allows you to see the inputs, as well as the outputs of the device. Another very handy menu for debugging. The units of measure screen allows you to switch between inches and meters as your units of measurement. It should be noted that doing so will wipe all stored jobs. Touching the pen and paper button allows you to see a preview of the new units and touching this button allows you to set all default programs. The last menu we'll be looking at is the tuning parameters menu. On this screen you will be able to see all the tuning parameters for your feeder. These numbers should not be altered without the help of a PA technician. If you are having tuning issues, it could be helpful to write down these numbers before calling in. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any more questions, you can call us at the number on screen here. Thank you and goodbye.